What's up? David Benavides versus Bubu Andre. Fight that took place this past weekend. Um, and um, yeah, man, it, it listen. I knew Benavides was gonna win. I thought it was gonna be kind of close in the beginning because Bubu Bubu Andrade Bubu Andrade likes to uh, he likes to start off fast you know he moves around circles his opponents throws a couple a couple of combinations but everything works off the jab for him uh, for the most part from from what I can see um. And he's not like, he, he just takes very little time to download info and to um, to figure out his opponents and what combinations are going to work within the fight. That's why, that's why he, he starts so fast. Um, but in this fight, uh, what, what was peculiar about this fight at the beginning was that um, it was really easy for Benavides since the first round, first and second round, to tag Andrade. Um, and and you could see it. That's that's what bothered me when the, from the first round, and I, and I thought it was gonna. Be, I mean, like I said, I knew I knew Benavides was gonna win, but I didn't think uh, Andrade was gonna get beat so bad, and I didn't think it was gonna be so easy for for Benavides. Uh, I thought Andrade was was at least gonna give him a hard time for a couple of rounds, and I don't. Th- I really don't think Andrade even do did that. Um, I think Andrade. Um, to be honest, I think and- Andrade came up short uh, from from what I expected of him, but at the same time, a lot of that had to do with with like the hype behind behind Andrade, and also I I did see him fight a couple of times. And I thought he was pretty good too. I thought he was a little awkward. I thought his um, his stance was a bit too wide for for my taste. Um, and uh, and I did think sometimes he was a little boring. Sometimes he was very like tentative. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is because he's always like pawing his jaw, his his jab, not his jaw. He's pawing his opponent's jab as well um and he's trying to trying to get it out of the way so he can land his shots and looking at things that the opponent does so that he can capitalize on them and sometimes if if he doesn't see anything in in other fights if he didn't see anything that wasn't there he would not start his combinations off um because he 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 wasn't sure of it and I, I do remember one fight, I forgot which one it was, that was a little bit boring like that. And that was one of the reasons a lot of fighters didn't want to fight him, because they thought that he was too, um, you know, tentative. Um, but at the same time, you know, in this fight, it wasn't like that. In this fight, you know, it seemed like early on, ben- Benavides, you know, the, the Mexican monster, was able to tag him with ease, you know, not, not a lot, because I, I do think, um, I, d- I did give the first round to, to Andrade, you know, the second was Benavides, and then, um, the third and the fourth, um, I think was Benavides as well, um, or was it the opposite, I, I, I'm confused a little bit, I forgot, but, um, but the point is, it, it's like, yeah, man, the easy in which, in which Benavides was touching up uh, Andrade's face early on let me know that this wasn't going to be that hard for Benavides because Benavides is a little bit of the opposite. He kind of goes through the body first and he wears you down in the later rounds. But if he's able to touch you to the face with ease in the first rounds, 
It's it's probably gonna be shorter. It's probably gonna be a shorter night for you. By the way, guys, I'm drinking a Celsius. Um, and it's cherry lemonade. This is one of those big. Uh, they have these new big cans. Um. I'm trying that out, so it's pretty good. It, it's a pretty good flavor. Um, but anyways, back to the fight. Um, yeah, so that that's what let me know that there was gonna be a short night. Um, and 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 Benavides really didn't impress me too much. I mean, he has to get credit at least for getting in there and fighting Benavides, but at the same time. Um, it, it almost sounded like he didn't have a choice but to get in there because he's 35 now. He hasn't really fought anybody of importance, um, you know, any big names or anything like that. And, you know, his career is pretty much over now. So it's like you either take this fight or it's nothing. And this should be a lesson learned, you know, for both the fans and fighters. Like, don't just... Don't just um, wait around for for a big fight. You know, if you can't get the biggest fight, get the second biggest fight. If you can't get the second biggest fight, get the third biggest fight. Um, and fourth, you know, whatever fifth, just just you're not people. People don't know your name yet, so you can't demand um, fights from people that are way above your pay grade. Um, and you know, um, just start fighting people. That's that's what I, that's would be my advice. And for fans, you know, stop getting on on uh, on bandwagons. I was gonna say bang wagons, but they don't sound right. <laughs> um, but <laughs> um, pause. <laughs> bang wagons. <laughs> pause, man. Double pause. Um, but yeah, man, like, don't, don't just, don't just, like, if you have a favorite fighter, right, and he hasn't proven himself yet, just be like, he's a good prospect, he's one of my prospects, or, 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 um, you know, Mexicans say that, that's, that's my rooster, that, that's my, that's mi gallo, like, meaning that that's gonna be a guy that in the future might, might be good, you know, but, don't um don't just, just don't just defend them and be like nah he don't have to fight like acting like he's already you know an A level fighter when he's not and there's a lot of fighters like that bro like right now in boxing there's a lot of fighters that that are already fighting once a year twice a year you know they're already you know acting like the shit don't stink when really Nobody knows who they are, dude, except for people that like clout chasers here in the U.S. You know, and one of the, the one of, um, one of my eye-opening experiences, uh, believe it or not, it's going to sound stupid because uh, I'm just getting started with this, with China. I'm not just getting started. I've been on here for, for a while, but posting like boxing stuff, um, I posted about Canelo. It was one 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 of the biggest, um, most watched videos. But one of the the biggest of all, um, I would say my second biggest is, is a Bruce Lee video talking about Bruce Lee. Um, and but the biggest one was me talking about um, um, Fury, Tyson Fury. From uh, uh, from England or, or Great Britain, the UK. Um, yeah, me, me talking about him. So so it just goes to show you, like he he's a boxer, but he's not an American. He's not anybody from from the US, and he's worldwide known. And and it, it showed me in in my in my eyes, it showed me that. That boxing isn't isn't American anymore. You know, it, it, there was a time where when we had champions here in the U.S., everybody looked to the U.S. 
and everybody wanted to see who we had because we had, you know, the best here, right? We had Ali, we had, uh, we've had Tyson, you know, um, you know, we've had, we have so many, Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, um, you know, Mayweather, uh, but, but it's not that way anymore, you know, it's, now it's more of a global thing. Now it's more like, you know, and, and and it's not just that it's a global thing. It's that we're not as as famous as we used to be. You know, we're not as relevant in boxing. The U, the U.S. is not as relevant in boxing as as we used to be. You know, to be honest, um, you know, right now I would say the ones that are on top, in my opinion. Is uh, is probably the UK. The UK scene, boxing scene, is pretty good. The Eastern European boxing scene, you know, the Ukrainians, the Russians, you know, Kazakhstanians, those guys, you know, from 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 those areas, you know, are, are doing good. And and Mexicans, you know, the 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 Mexican boxers, you know, are are worldwide renowned now. And, and unfortunately, the U.S. boxing scene, you know, it's more about clout and it's more about uh, what you could say and, and what what you could talk about rather than what you've done, you know, who you've beaten, um, people not fighting each other. Now, this past year was a good year for fights being made, but it took us a really long time to get to that point. Uh, it. it it took the U.S. boxing scene realizing that people weren't watching them anymore. You know, people weren't interested in any of their fighters anymore. Because um, the U.S. seems like the upside down when it comes to boxing. You know, we, we idolize uh, boxers that don't do anything, that just sit around and fight once or twice a year. And we minimize and, and, and criticize fighters that fight four or five times a year. You know, like Canelo Alvarez. And Canelo is an American, but he, he, listen, he might as well be. And the reason I say that is because the Mexican scene and the American, the American boxing scene are connected and they've been connected for a while. I would say since the, since probably the eighties, um, the boxing scene has been connect, connected with the Mexican box because we're so close to each other. The markets are so close to each other and they feed off each other. So so even though Mexico is right now, I would say better, the, the, the boxing scene is better, you know, it's the American economy of boxing will feed off of that um, because most of the fights are going to be made. If, if there's a Mexican champion like Anello or, or if Benavides becomes the next big star, uh, most of the tickets going to be sold uh, are going to be here in the U.S. from Mexican migrants. So the markets are connected. And because the markets are connected, the cultures are in a way connected as well. And that's why I'm saying like Mexico and the U.S. in, in more than one way, just not not just boxing, they're connected, you know, and, and whatever happens down south eventually ends up over here in, in our streets um, and vice versa as well. You know, we were, we're influential to Mexico, uh, especially when, when they, it, Mexicans tend to think that we're doing something right over here for some reason. You know, it's kind of like when, when Americans listen to a British accent and, and we think uh, automatically this guy is a, this guy is a uh, a rich person from England. When really they're probably like, like uh, some poor guy from from Liverpool or something. Um, but anyways, uh, getting back to boxing, man. Like Benavides, you know he's very underrated. You know he he, in my opinion, a lot of these types of fighters, a lot of fighters like uh, like him. You know, they don't get the credit they deserve for their strategy and for their, 
their ability to to impose their will on their opponents, to control their opponents, and to ultimately, you know, strip the will to fight from their opponents. It's almost like they're draining their opponents' will to fight. And this style is very entertaining to me. I've I've studied this 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 style of, of, of boxing. Um and most most of the time people that use this style are very under underestimated. Mainly because their style is based on power. And is based on hurting and intimidating your opponents and and um and being the cat to a mouse and playing kind of playing with your food anyway so um i want to go over some some fighters that <clears throat> that use this same style as benavides and, and show you how legitimate this style is because a lot of people look at benavides and they're like oh he's squared up to his opponents that that's another fallacy you know and, and, and in this channel that's what i want to do i want to go over fallacies i want to go over you know people talking shit and not really know what they're talking about. There is a lot of fighters in the history of boxing that have used a squared up stance. Um, and the flat footed thing, that's another thing that I'm going to go over. That's another fallacy. I might, I might go over it today, but right now I want to go over the squared up stance. Meaning squaring up to your opponents and how this is a bad thing to do and how you should never do it and how... Um, that's what people think, right? That's that's what people believe that because Benavides has this squared up stance and because Benavides squares up to their opponent to his opponents, that um, that he's not a a technical fighter that he doesn't know what he's doing. And listen, let's go over some other fighters since you since you say that about Benavides, let's go over some other fighters that use a squared up stance. Mike Tyson uses a squared up stance now. Mike Tyson's uh, squared up stance isn't as flat footed as Benavides is. Um, he 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 tends to use the movement of his feet to produce power. He turns his opponents, spins uh, Mike Tyson spins around his opponents, and and lands shots um, um, from different angles, you know. And and the pressure that Mike Tyson produces is more about movement and it's more about uh, making your opponent miss. By moving your head and then coming back with, with hooks uh, to the body, you know, fainting to the body, coming up top, stuff like that. You know, it's 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 different, but the point is that his the way he he the way he positions himself to his opponents is squared up. You know, it's almost squared up to his. It's slightly less squared up than Benavides, but it's still squared up. You know. Um, and, and the thing about it is, the thing that's kind of weird is that Benavides doesn't move his head that much, but he, he has that high guard. But there is fighters that square up and don't move their head that much. And I would like to bring you to none other than um, George Foreman, big George Foreman, um, who, who reminds me a lot of of Benavides. Um, and, and I'm going to come back to him, but, but another, another guy that, that uses a squared up stance and actually, you know, the closer you, you get to, to the ropes or to a corner, he actually widens his, his feet to trap you there. And, and the guy is, is, is none other than Julio Cesar Chavez. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, is another guy who was also underestimated and people would say, Oh, you know, he's just a brute with a good chin and that hit that hits hard not knowing that there's there's a there's a method to this style there's a method to this type of of madness i guess you could say um squaring up to your opponent is a legitimate way to box you know there's there's, there's different ways to crack an egg as they say and this is definitely one of them um so so some people use an L-shaped stance. Some people use a bladed stance. You know, um, and I think I've gone over it in, in other in, in other videos. And some people prefer a squared up stance. A squared up stance fighter usually 
wants to hit you with both hands and wants you to worry about both hands equally. Why? Because that's how he's going to build his offensive attack. And he's going to... um, That's how he's going to... um, uh, win the fight, you know, he's going to go to the body, you're going to watch out for the body, he's going to come up top, he's going to hit you with the left, he's going to hit you, and, and both of his, both of his hands, most of the time, these fighters, both of their hands are equally as strong, they don't have a preferred hand, you know, people with bladed stances, usually their, their best hand is going to be their, their power hand, which is, which is behind them, or, or, or closer to, to their chin, um, You know, so you know what to expect with them. You know that they're going to try to hit you with that big shot. But with a squared up guy, you know, he's he's putting both of those things in front of you. So you could fear both of them and you're not going to know which one's going to land first. This is a much more threatening style. This is a much more menacing style. And it's and it's meant to produce fear in your opponent's um, minds. Um, You know, one of the things I want to go over with really quick is. You know the strategy uh, of the horns of the bull. Um, that was a, a famous strategy used by um, Shaka Zulu, uh, the African warrior. And um, the horns of the bull is very similar technique uh, or strategy to what Benavides does in the ring. You know, um, when it comes to warfare, the horns of the bull. M- m- what it does is it encircles their opponents, right? It traps their opponents. And sometimes it lets their opponents escape for a little bit so they could separate and scatter. And when they scatter, their numbers become uh, less important. But in order to do this, you know, you have to show your numbers to your opponents. You have to show that you have, um, that, that the numbers are on your side. So what Shaka, Shaka Zulu would do is he would he would slowly trot forward because he wanted his enemies to see. Look, look, look at my numbers. Look at my strength. We have plenty of warriors to get you. Um, we have plenty of people to 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 attack you. So so what they would do they they wouldn't go fast. They would go slow and slowly slowly you know walk towards the settlements because what they would usually be attacking was um was other people that had settlements or or um colonizers so they, they, were, they were trying to kick out the the english the british from from their land and so so what they would do is they would slowly trot forward because because they wanted them to see their numbers they wanted them to see their strengths and um and that's how they would they would win right and they would have two flanks on each side and then they would have one middle flank and the middle flank was where the, most of the strength was, and that's what that's what was pushing forward, forward to actually do the damage. But the two side flanks were just to show that that that, that the numbers were were how can I say this that the numbers were overwhelming to to the opponent's situation, and that's what what the strategy behind Benavides is. You know, it's to slowly trot forward to your opponent, you know, and, and also let him let him escape. You know, give him an escape route. That way he thinks that he's doing something by moving moving a lot. But really what he's doing is he's tiring himself out. And he's going to make it harder for, for him to take those punches later on. He's not going to be able to move forever, especially since it's a, a ring. Um, you can't escape the ring, you know. Hmm. <laughs> Um, so, you know, this is, this is the strategy behind Benavides, Benavides' uh, style, and, and a lot of people have used it. You know, another good example is Marvelin Hagler. Uh, Marvelin Hagler did the same thing, but the only difference is that he was a little bit more crafty with his style, and, and, and again, you know, these, these types of guys that, that do this, they have power in both hands. So Marvin Hagler had power in both hands as well. And not only that, he could switch up on you. He could switch to Southpaw. And and, and to be honest, all of these guys could do that. Um, they can, but some of them do it 
within the exchange, like Benavides and, and Foreman, and others do it, which which is, I, I disagree with that strategy. Others do it in front of you, meaning they switch switch their stance in front of you, or they switch their stance in between rounds, meaning the next round they're going to come out um, with a southpaw stance, or, or if not an orthodox or whatever. So I disagree with that one. With that strategy less because you're showing your opponent what you're gonna do. I personally believe that it's better to to switch stances within the exchange and and then be able to adapt to if your guy if, if the opponent is is standing on, on your on your right side, be ready to throw a power shot with your left, you know, or an uppercut and then a, a power shot with your left. Or, uh, hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. Yeah, but in this fight, you know, uh, you know, really quick, you know, what, what what I think, I think, I don't know if I went over this part, but what I think was bothering Benavides, I mean, Andrade, was that, um, that Benavides was, was there in front of him way too fast than, than he was, than, than Andrade was used to. Like I said, Andrade is used to keeping people behind his jab. And and then uh, every once in a while, just throwing that overhand right, you know, that big, big looping shot. And then, you know, ducking under his opponents and then throwing body shots um, and then moving out of the way. You know, so he's that type of fighter. He's the type of fighter that, that fights behind their jab. The thing about these guys is that they have to be in control um, from beginning to end. If anything happens that isn't according to the script, meaning if they're – jab gets eliminated if if their opponent gets past their jab really fast if anything like that happens they start to panic and they start to throw desperate flurries uh, because that's that's really the only thing they, they know how to do so this is why yes it's good to have fundamentals it's good to to throw everything behind the jab but if that weapon is taken away from you it's not good for you to to not know what to do you know, and in this case, you know, Andrade was kind of throwing flurries, but they weren't flurries that came from anything that he was used to, which is working the jab and then doing things when he wants to do it. So, and I think the the, the reason for that is because one, it was southpaw versus, versus right-handed fighter. They're going to nullify each other's jabs. And number two, Benavides' squared up stance made it to where um, when they met, uh each other that Benavides was power hand was already in front of Benavides's face so all he had to do really is just stick it out and he would hit him he would touch him so that was part of the reason why it was so easy for Benavides to keep touching him um in the face and, and to the body you know what I mean and um even though uh, Andrade was slipping out of the shots and moving out of the way you know, turning him, it just ultimately wasn't enough. Of course, you add that to the fact that uh, Benavides was bigger than Andrade, and there's a recipe to, for disaster there. Like nothing was going, nothing was going Andrade's way, bro. It was, it was everything was 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 going against him winning. So, um, so yeah, it. it from the beginning, I started I started looking at and at all the things fall over Benavides, and I was like, I mean Andrade, and I was like, there's this fight is it's not gonna look good for him, man. And then, <clears throat> you know, somewhere around the third or, or the fourth, he got even more hurt, and you could see the pain in his in his in his in, in Andrade's face, like, yo, I can't take too much of this anymore. Um, yeah, it was not good, man, and. And listen, I mean, I guess I give him some credit, right, for, for getting in there. But like I said, he had no choice but to get in there. You know, he's 35. He's towards the end of his career, you know, um, and, and he needed to do something. And um, so, yeah. But, you know, um, but, yeah, man, that's that was pretty much the fight, man. And, and, and Andrade, you know, what's next for him? You know, towards the end of the fight, you know, what I didn't like about it is that he did say that it was because of the weight. 
and because he was too big. But the thing about it is, bro, like, everyone knows you've been talking and you've been saying that you're the best and that people are afraid of you. They even called you boo-boo because he said people are afraid of you. The, 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 the problem is about that is that you're calling out a guy in Canelo Alvarez. You've been calling out a guy in Canelo Alvarez who's been fighting people heavier than him his entire career. So that's an elite level fighter. An elite level fighter is able to fight people, you know, that are heavier than them. Why? Because something about them, either their skill, their strength, um, or 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 their chin, something is elite level to where it overcomes or overtakes the size difference in the ring, right? Um, look at look at look at uh, Floyd Mayweather. You know, Floyd Mayweather, his entire career, he fought people bigger than him. People taller than him, people stronger than him, sometimes even faster than him, and, and he will still win. So that's an elite level fighter. Bubu Andrade has been calling out elite level uh, an elite level fighter his whole life, which is Canelo Alvarez. And now we find out that Andrade is not an elite level fighter. All right. And for him to make that excuse, you know, it shows me that yeah, that he's he's just like his fans. His, his fans make up excuses for him. I think I heard them say something about his trunks being too heavy. <laughs> and, they, dude, like, but who, whose fault is that, though? It's not my fault that he had those. I didn't give him those trunks. Did Canelo provide the trunks? I don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, somebody, somebody, somebody explain it to me. You know, um, so, so, um, I don't know. At the end of the day, you know, we found out that Benavides is not an elite level fighter, you know, and he he wasn't as good as as we we thought he was. Now, of course, it could have been age, it could have been this, that, the other, his trunks, whatever, you know. But personally, you know, I just think we saw the same we saw the same Bubu Andre from every other fight, but it's just certain certain um. Certain things happened technically and strategically in the fight that just weren't working for him. And then, of course, you do add that to the fact that the other guy was heavier than him. And, of course, you know, um, but that wasn't the only reason, dude. That that definitely wasn't the only reason. Like, there, there was more going on in there. Like, if if, if Andrade was was actually outsmarting Benavides or or... If you saw Andrade do something in there that was like, damn, dude, he's going to win. Like, I never saw that. You know, I never, never in the fight did I see. Um, I mean, he did through, like I said, he did throw some flurries and stuff like that. But it was out of character for him. Like, I've seen him before do that. But he would do it controlled. He would do it behind a jab. He would do it um, when he wanted to do it. You know, but for some reason in this fight, it just seemed like. And also, he wouldn't get touched. Until in the later rounds, like his face wouldn't get touched until the later rounds, when he was a little bit more tired. In this fight, Andrade's face was getting touched up within the first and second round, bro. So I was like, either Benavides is is too fast for him, or or something technically is happening to where he's able to touch him up just by reaching out his hand, which which was part of it as well. But the thing is, like, Andrade should have should have. Should have realized that if I realized that I'm not I'm not a professional fighter, all right. I'm a I'm a hobbyist fighter, meaning I fight the way people go out and have pickup games, right? And, and I know some of you are going, oh, you're a street fighter. I'm not a street fighter. I'm like I'm like a guy who goes and spars people, right? He goes to a gym and he's like, all right, let, let's spar, let's get some work in, whatever. Or or if if like your neighbor wants to you know have a little scrap or something, we could do that too. Right, that that's how I do it, but I, I know what I'm talking about when I see things, because I do it a lot. But if I could see it, like that's what I'm saying. If I could see what's going on in there, and Andrade couldn't, or maybe, maybe he did, but he couldn't do much about it for some reason. Um, I just I just don't know. You know, I just don't know. I'm just, I just I'm just. I was surprised with, with those couple of rounds that I saw that he was getting touched up to the face early on. 
because Andrade usually that doesn't happen to him, you know, in the in those early rounds. Sometimes sometimes he he would go rounds fights without really getting touched that much to the face, you know. So, um, but anyways, getting back to 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 what's next for 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 Boo Boo Andre, I would say you know for Boo Boo Andre he should fight, you know, Charlo. Or he should fight maybe. I mean, maybe Plant. Maybe he fights Plant. But I feel like, I feel like it'll be a closer fight for him, a more easier, not easier, but a, a more possible fight for him to win against Charlo. Excuse me. Um, cause Plant, I feel like Plant's gonna beat him. You know, or maybe who knows? Styles make fights. You know. Um. But um, but yeah, he should he should face Plant or he should face Charlo, face Charlo, or you know one of these fighters like this man, like you know kind of like a B level fighters, um, so that he could get back into it a little bit because he's been inactive for so long. That's another thing that that could have could have hurt him, you know. Um, as far as Benavides goes, everybody knows that. That he wants Canelo, and everybody else wants that fight as well. I want that fight, um, you know. And, and I think it's gonna happen, but I don't know if it's gonna happen next. You know, I have my doubts. I think I've heard I've heard that that Canelo's gonna fight him next, but other people are saying that he might fight Mengue. Other people are saying that he might fight um, I don't know somebody else, Charlo. Like, he, but the thing is, bro, like, don't fight Charlo, bro. You, you're gonna destroy Charlo, and it's not gonna look good, bro. It's gonna look bad, even if you beat him. Like, if you, like, everyone knows you're gonna beat Charlo, but it's like we don't want to see that, bro, because it's like, like, why even bother with him? Like, he's, he's, he's barely coming back. All right, and he's barely like, like, starting to get his 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 game back, and. He had trouble with with a smaller fighter in in the last fight he was in. Um, he beat him. Um, ben, he beat Benavides' his brother, but you know there was still some stuff in there that shouldn't have happened if he wasn't in in his in his in the top of his game. So having him fight uh, Canelo in his next fight, you know, personally I think would be devastating for him. He he'd lose badly dude um so and people i don't think people want to see that you know um um but yeah i'm not i'm not paying for that bro i'm not i'm not paying for for a fight between him him and and charlo um so i don't know that's just my if he fights mangui that's 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 okay um but then who who's benavid is gonna fight so let's say Let's say Canelo fights Manguia next. Then Benavides, uh, from 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 what I hear, he's gonna move up and fight um, Bebo, right? Let's just say, let's just say Benavides beats Bebo, which would be crazy, right? Now, now you have to fight him. And let's say Canelo beats Manguia. That would be an even bigger fight, dude. That would be a, a bigger fight than it is now. Now, right now, it's big, but it's big for us. I mean, it's big, big for people that that are either ca- uh, not casuals that are either um, uh, boxing connoisseurs or mid-level connoisseurs, people that that kind of watch every once in a while. But for casuals, for people that don't even know. Those are the people you want to be paying attention to this. Why? Because those are the people that are going to make this a bigger fight. You know what I mean? So I feel like one more fight for each of them would be better in my opinion. And then after that one one fight more, then they could face each other. Um, I think if it was my 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 thing, what I would do is I would make Canelo fight um Mangui and and uh 
and Benavides fight Bebo. If Benavides beats Bebo, dude, that that would be like he'd be like, because I'm a big I, I'm a big fan of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, and what he he accomplishes in his career. Even though he lost to Sugar Ray Leonard, I I thought he won. Um, just that whole run of him beating up everybody Leonard beat up, but beating them up even worse. Um, that was like, bro, that, that's like movie, like, uh, type shit, you know, like, like when you see an arc of, of like somebody going on a, on a, on a rampage looking for, for vengeance on this one guy and he's looking for him, like kind of like Kill Bill and he beats up all of his like, uh, henchmen, you know, and then he finally gets to the final boss and then he, he beats him up too. So like. If Benavides does that, it's going to be so, like, climactic when when he finally faces um, um, Canelo. Um, but anyways, those are my thoughts, guys. I know it took a long time. It's a long video. But it's, it's, a, it's a fun topic. So, um, yeah. That is it for today, guys.